Welcome to the Totally Honest Cooking Show. I'm Mark. This week we're doing a cherry tomato pasta. So let's get started. Like I said last week, we're reaching the end of the school year and I'm still a clown car on fire. So we're going with easy stuff that I think everybody should know about. We're going to start with about half a pound of sausage and I'm heating my pan to medium and to count my half a pound I'm just cutting one pound in half and putting the rest in the freezer right easy enough I looked up a lot of recipes for this it's as easy or as hard as you want to make it right that's one of the good things about something like this when you are in fact a clown car on fire in your day-to-day -day life you can do whatever you want with this recipe if you want it can just be cherry tomatoes basil cheese and olive oil and obviously the pasta part right i'm in the mood for a little bit of meat so i'm throwing in some hot italian sausage you make it how you want it you could do this with chicken you could do this with no meat at all you could throw some beans in there whatever you want i thought about mushrooms but eh, i wanted meat today well that's going i've got my water under as high as it'll go bringing that to a boil now i've got some health issues lately uh, celiac runs in my family so i am trying gluten-free pasta never made gluten-free pasta regularly before um, we're going to see if we can finish it in the sauce with the gluten-free pasta which should work fine given that it's corn and rice both of those have starch in them, so it should thicken just fine, just like regular pasta. You don't need to use gluten-free pasta. I'm just, again, trying to see if this will help the myriad of issues that I've been having. You know, whatever. Now, they say salty like the sea for pasta water, right? The people over at Serious Eats did a test, said you don't want literal salty like the sea pasta water they recommend about a tablespoon every four cups for one percent salinity so that's what i'm doing one of those was a heaping tablespoon because it's slightly over four cups in a liter. And that's how they measured it. Anyway. You know, maybe I could have used the full pound. You know what? Yeah. Remember when I lied and said, uh, use half a pound, put the rest in the freezer? Uh, I lied. Jerkins is probably giving me hell in the overlay right now. He does that. Jerkins is my editor. Thank you, Jerkins. Everybody shout out to Jerkins in the comments. Jerkins works real hard. Well, that's finishing up. I'm going to start prepping my garlic. I should probably also find the lid to this pan. That'll be a quest in a minute. We got five cloves of garlic crushed here like i said you can do whatever you want for this recipe you could painstakingly shred these you could mince them up you could crush them with a garlic crusher you could probably even do that thing from the movie goodfellas where they take a razor blade and painstakingly use that i'm just gonna crush and then give them a little rough once over. While dangerous knife play is one of the hallmarks of this show, we're not really gonna get too deep with it this week. Okay, now we're gonna wash and rinse our tomatoes. So this particular brand comes with this peel off top that you can just peel it off and use this as your little colander. So that's what I'm going to do. Throw them in a colander, give them a quick dry. And then I'm just going to drop them in. 
And I'm going to put in, pour in the half cup of olive oil that I should have poured down before I poured them in. We may not even need the lid, but I'm going to put them in, put the lid on because I feel like there will be splatter. Throw my garlic in, put my apron on, give it a little stir stir. Let everybody get in there. So here's the thing. Like I said, I looked at a lot of recipes for this before I started cooking. And what you'll find is that some of them say, cut the tomatoes in half, which feels like an extra step. Some of them say, cut half the tomatoes in half. Some of them say, wait till this is part way done, then start mat or some of them say, wait till they start bursting, then mash them. Some of them say, wait till they start bursting, then take half out and then blend the remaining ones. I'm just going to use a potato masher because it feels like it's easy and it's in the spirit of this being a lazy week. There's a lot of kinds of potato mashers. I prefer this one with the zigzags to like the circular one with the crosshatch pattern. That's because stuff gets stuck in there and it's not as easy to clean out. I hate wasting crap. So we're going to give this, this should be done in eight to 15 minutes. I'm just going to stand here and stare at it while I stare at the water and maybe clean up some of this crap. Actually, I lied while that's going, we're going to go ahead and chop our basil up. This is about, we'll say half a cup to a cup of basil. Usually I go to the Asian market and get a big honking container, but like I said, I am exhausted. So I just got three little packets from the grocery store. We're just going to chop them up. Grocery store basil can be hit or miss. Sometimes you get great basil. Sometimes you get kind of medium. Anyway. I'm just cutting this up. I'm not going to go for a full mince. Honestly, I feel like this knife needs sharpened. I'm just going for a rough cut, I think. Ish. Because all of my knives suck right now. Okay. This claims eight minutes to al dente. I'll be the judge of that. And I've got my slotted spoon and my ladle for later. Okay. This... Gonna go ahead and take the lid off, add a big pinch of salt. I'm also gonna shake in some crushed red pepper. little teeny tiny bit of Italian seasoning because I was almost out and why not obviously you add what you want you don't need to add anything other than salt and pepper hit it with a little pepper And it already smells like a sauce, which is good. You want it to smell like a sauce. I'm gonna smash about half of these. Ooh, that was satisfying. If you want it smoother and you wanna get rid of the skins, you could hit it with a food processor or a blender. Or if you got one of those motorboat contraptions, you can use one of those. I thought about using mine, but I didn't. Anyway, let's see. How is it now? It 
I may have added just a teeny bit too much crushed red pepper. Okay, that's pretty good. So, when you're tasting sauces and stuff, your goal is to see whether it's well seasoned enough. The trick that is impossible to teach via an internet cooking show is how to know how much is enough. What is the right amount? These amounts are largely to taste and things like salt, you learn what they do as you cook. So the best way to learn is to play around with it. I'm going to take most of the basil. Wait, no, we're going to wait till we add the pasta. But I'm going to go ahead and add the meat. Next on our list of things to add are mozzarella and Parmesan cheese. As much as you want. Go crazy. Now, some recipes just call for parm. But if you want stretchy, then you're going to need mozz. That tastes just shy of al dente. So we're going to add our pasta. In most of the recipes I looked at, two to three pints of cherry tomatoes will get you a pound of pasta's worth of sauce. But a lot of the gluten-free things that I looked at said, use whatever's in the package. Don't try to adjust to a pound because they're not necessarily ounce for ounce in terms of serving size. I don't think they puff up any more than other pastas do or anything like that that would be weird to me but again never done this before sadly there's not a lot of options for gluten-free noodles at least in terms of shape or so, as far as i've noticed at my grocery store we'll add about two ladlefuls of pasta water and we'll see how that works and then we'll give it a stir with Bernie. And we'll add in our cheese. Big old handful of Parmesan. Another big old handful of Parmesan. Give it a swirl. And then a big old handful of Mott's. And another big old handful of Mott's. And we'll add most of the basil. Not all the basil, but most. Okay. Now, does she look like much? No. Is she going to be amazing? Yes. This is going to be delish so we're gonna go ahead and grab ourselves a big old ladle full look at this can you believe this it looks really good remember how I said it didn't look that great when you plate it up it looks great and just a little bit of cheese on top okay so, this is what we do when we want to be a disaster. If you feel like a train wreck this week, get yourself some pasta. Do yourself a favor and make this. Me and this bowl have to go get to know each other. Because look at it. Oh my god. Like, subscribe, click the little bell, and I'll see you next Wednesday. Bye.